What if I told you that cities like New York, London, and Tokyo are still stuck in endless traffic jams? And a small African nation just jumped the world and became the first one on the continent to test a real flying taxi? No, this isn't science fiction. This isn't a movie. This is Rwanda. At the African Aviation Summit 2025 in Kigali, something happened that will go down in history. The world watched as an autonomous, all-electric flying taxi lifted off. No pilot on board, no joystick, no remote control. Just software, sensors, and a bold vision of the future. And the craziest part? This isn't a one-time stunt. Rwanda has a plan to turn flying taxis into an everyday reality. So buckle up, because in this video, we are diving into how Rwanda pulled this off. And if you've seen African homemade drones, then this is definitely an improvement. In September 2025, Kigali became the stage for something historic. The star of the show was a Ehang EH216S, a fully electric two-seater passenger drone designed by a Chinese company, Ehang. In front of government officials, aviation experts, and even President Paul Kagame himself, the aircraft rose smoothly into the air climbing 100 meters before gliding across the Kigali skyline. No pilot, no human controls, the drone flew itself. This was Africa's first ever demonstration of a flying taxi and it sent a powerful message. Rwanda isn't waiting for the future, Rwanda is building it. The EH216S looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's a compact pod with two seats, surrounded by 16 electric routers for maximum safety and efficiency. It carries two passengers, cruises at about 130 km per hour, and can fly up to 35 km on a single charge. It takes off and lands vertically, which means it doesn't need a runway and it operates completely autonomously, guided by artificial intelligence. <laughs> Talk of AI in Africa. Think about what this means for a city like Kigali. A trip that normally takes 45 minutes in traffic could be reduced to just 5 minutes by air. And while helicopter rides cost hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars, these flying taxis are expected to be far more affordable with future rides potentially priced between $20 and $50. That's a very huge difference. It's quieter, cleaner, and safer than traditional aviation, and it's designed for cities of the future like Kigali and maybe Lagos. But the big question is this. Why Rwanda? Why not Dubai? Why not New York or Tokyo? The answer lies in Rwanda's unique approach to innovation. 
while bigger countries get tangled in red tape. Rwanda moves fast. It has one of the most progressive aviation regulatory systems in the world, allowing experimental projects to take off where others get stuck in endless paperwork. In other words, they make it very simple for innovation. And this doesn't come out of nowhere. Rwanda has been leading in drone technology for nearly a decade. Back in 2016, Rwanda partnered with Zipline, a US drone delivery company that delivered blood and medical supplies to remote hospitals. Instead of trucks struggling on muddy roads, drones were launched from central hubs and parachuted life-saving packages directly to clinics. The results were revolutionary. By 2021, more than 75% of Rwanda's blood deliveries outside Kigali were done by drones. Hundreds of thousands of flights, countless of lives saved. Villagers that once waited for hours for supplies could now receive them in under 30 minutes only. This made Rwanda the first country in the world to build a nationwide drone delivery system. And more importantly, it made the public comfortable with autonomous aircraft. I don't know if you see where I'm going with this. So when Rwanda announced that flying taxis were coming, the idea didn't sound impossible. It sounded like the next natural step. The flying taxi in Kigali wasn't built locally. It came from Ihang. A pioneering Chinese aviation company that's been testing its autonomous aircraft for years in China, Japan, and the United Arab Emirates. But most governments have been slow to approve real passenger flights because you can understand the risks. That's why Kigali demonstrations were so important. It wasn't just a tech showcase. It was the first time Ihang passenger drone flew publicly in Africa. For Ihang, Rwanda is the perfect partner, small but ambitious, tech-friendly and willing to embrace bold ideas. Rwanda's flying taxi isn't just a cool gadget, it's part of a bigger vision. The government is already planning dozens of vertiports, specialized hubs where flying taxis can take off, land, and recharge. And this ties directly into Rwanda's vision 2050, a plan to transform the country into a knowledge-based, technology-driven economy. Flying taxis could slash travel times in crowded cities, boost tourism by offering scenic flights, connect rural areas to urban centers, create new jobs in aviation and engineering, and reduce pollution by replacing shortcut trips with clean air electric flights. In other words, Wanda doesn't just want to use flying taxis, it wants to build an entire low altitude economy. So here's the bigger picture. Africa has a history of leapfrogging old technology. Many Africans skipped landline phones and went straight to mobile phones. Mobile banking app systems like M-Pesa became mainstream in Africa before the West ever caught up. And now, Rwanda may do the same with aviation, jumping directly into the future while others are still stuck debating. While cities in Europe and America spend billions repairing outdated infrastructure, Rwanda is building the future from scratch. That's the leapfrog effect. Of course, it won't be all smooth flying. Current batteries limit flights to around 30 kilometers. Weather in Africa can be unpredictable. Heavy rains or strong winds could ground flights. Public trust will take time because convincing people to step inside a pilotless drone is no small task, especially to us Africans. And scaling it from a single demonstration to a full transport network will be a very expensive affair. 
but Rwanda has showcased before that it can overcome challenges. When zipline drones first announced, many doubted they'd work. Today, they are a normal part of their healthcare system. Flying taxis could follow the same exact path. What do you think? Comment down below. The Kigali test flight isn't just a win for Rwanda. It's a signal to the entire world. It proves that innovation doesn't just come from Silicon Valley, Tokyo, or Europe. Sometimes, the boldest ideas are tested in places no one expects. By being the first African nation to fly passenger drone, Rwanda has positioned itself as a global leader in aviation innovation. And this could spark a ripple effect across the continent. Imagine flying taxis in Nairobi, Lagos, or Cape Town. Imagine drone networks connecting rural farmers directly to city markets. Imagine Africa skipping decades of slow infrastructure building and jumping straight into the air mobility era. <laughs> that is definitely something to look forward to. So what happened in Kigali wasn't just a flight test. It was a glimpse into the future. A future where you don't wait in traffic for hours. A future where life-saving medicine is delivered in minutes. A future where the sky doesn't just belong to airplanes, but to everyday people like you and me or me and other people. Rwanda didn't just test a flying taxi. It took the lead in shaping the future of transport. The only question is now whether the rest of the world will catch up or whether Africa will fly ahead. So tell me in the comments, would you ride in a flying taxi? So if this blew your mind, smash the like button, subscribe for more deep dives into the future of innovation in Africa and the world. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.